what you do first of all, that vehicle now is stuck. What I need you to do is to come up with, uh, calculate the pull, winch pull you're going to require to pull that out. First of all, the weight of that vehicle is 1.2k, uh, 1.2 uh, ton. You are on gravel. So calculate the winch pull required to do that. Once you've done that, I want you then to start having a look at what size rope that you are going to require. You then need to, to have a look around the area over here to, to establish where you're going to pull from. Now, I want you two working together, first of all, to do the calculation of this one. I want you to calculate by yourself apart from these guys, the winch pull for this one required. Okay, uh, once that is completed, bring your fullest mm -hmm. calculations to me and I'll check them. Any questions? Let's get it going. The vehicle's more than 1.5 tonnes, so there should be more. 1.2 tonnes is weighed in there. Yeah. We, we, our, our calculation was 0.5 ton. So you reckon you need a half a ton uh, weight to pull that out? Well, that we, we don't think so. I know, you, I'm bloody sure you're, you but won't. What's your one? 1.730. Uh, let's go through, you've got your little charts with you? Yep. Okay, let's go through and have a look first of all. Write it down. This is what I said before with you guys. Write it in your motherfucking notebook. Calculate each yeah. formula. So 1.2. 1 1.2 is the weight of the casualty. Divided by 5, which is gravel, equals 0.24. Yep, I agree with that one. Yeah. And then we take the... There's no um, uh, damage resistance because all of our wheels are moving. It's not bellied out, so we forget about it. Hang on, you have a look. Why you think it's... Uh, it's, uh, it won't move then. They're not seized, but it's, you can say that it is seized in there because it's not going anywhere. Oh, okay. All it is is going down, isn't it? So both wheels are seized. So both wheels are seized. So that's your damage resistance, isn't it? All four wheels are seized? No, only two. the two. Two oh, Okay. So you get a uh, times of by uh, two. So, right, yeah, well so there you go, that brings yeah. your bloody uh, thing up straight away because yeah. I know you can't pull that out with a half a tonne pull. No. So that's two, two times the weight. You to bring you here. That's why you use these fillers with charts, see? <laughs> with the formulas on. Yeah. You think it'd be worthwhile one of you running up? Our final winch pull. Our final winch pull we have calculated is uh, 1.8 tonnes. Yeah. That's based but on 20 degrees. Yeah. The way that we came through that was we divided 1.2 divided by 5. Yep. Um, for our grade resistance, that came to 0.24. Then we based our damage resistance on two tracks seized. Yep. So we two times the weight divided by three equal 0.8. Yes. And then um, for our angle, we based it on a 20 degree grade. Uh, we divided 1.2 because it's less than 60 degrees by 60. We times it by the grade of 20 degrees, it gave us 0.4 added those three together and then we factored in our um, safety margin of 25% so times all that by well, one point two five. 25% is already uh, added in there. Yeah. But so also what you what, what was your final answer you came up with? Final answer was 1.8 tonne. So what are you going to, what's your winch rule you require? Two. Two. Two tonne. Good. Yeah. Well done. Okay. The next stage I want you guys to do now is to have a look in your fellow's arsenal over there. Yeah. What's available? to uh, actually extract that, yeah. that uh, thing. I also, uh, that vehicle, also want you to do go through the inspection and tell me, tell us exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. And once you're happy with uh, 
with the inspection that you think you've got enough there to pull for a uh, two ton? I then want to see you fill the hook up. Okay. Any questions? Go for it. Work as a team this time. So what's the uh, pull rating on that strike? Yeah, two ton, as long as it's straight. Sorry? Two ton of the straight. Two ton. So if it's straight, if it's doubled up, four. And if it's length, one point six. So we have to know by colour. Um, I can't remember. Okay, uh, so that's four. right. It's all written on there, so you can pull that with a two ton uh, rating. Good. This one hasn't got any rating on it. Um, that was another way of finding out where you uh, what that uh, strop is rated at. By colour. Colour was one, and what's the other one? Um, if you have a look at your charts, on the charts of your fellows, the colour coding, etc. Mm -hmm. It will tell you the thickness, isn't it? Ah, uh, the width. The width of the strop. Strop itself. Those Which is not on that one, those are chains. Yeah. Could be on the other one that you were issued with was your strop. That was issued to you quite a time uh, when we did the recovery exercise. There's a colour coding one in there and also tells you what a rating that those strops are and the width of it. Those are chains you've got there. With uh, the shackles, what are you looking for? Um, the fact that it's straight, um, it untwists and twists up easily. Um, yep. An inspection of it. Um, also, to have a look here on the side, the figures there for uh, what weight we can pull. And what's the weight of that one? What can uh, that ton. one pull? How much? Four ton shackle. Four ton shackle? Yeah. So you're well within your margin there, aren't you? This one's safe. Yep. That's what we need to do. That one, this, this one, one is as well. This one's all right. It's got no uh, dents with marks. What else are you looking at when you're looking at inspecting shackles, etc.? Well, that kind of stuff. We had, we had okay, we had gouged damaged, out. Gouged out. And that one there really has been gouged out, isn't it? Yep. So would you use that? No. No. If, we, if we've got a higher one, yeah. Well, this one's both in better condition and it's also... The other thing is what you're looking at is when you're on that end there. Those ain't like, go like that. Okay. Straight. Eyelids are straight. Yeah. Okay, they're straight across from each other and the pin can actually go in and out easily. And the rating of that one? Go. There's your rating on that one there, look. Two ton. There. Oh. That's the rating stamped in it. Oh, right. Alright. So, failing that, if you, your strokes aren't. Uh, uh, capable of doing the task. What other thing is we can, as you can see down there, wire rope now. Inspect when you inspect the wire rope. What are you going to do? What are you looking? What are you looking at? The uh, rated pull on it, which is uh, looks like four ton on this one. Forty ton. Forty ton. Yeah, 40. Okay, put that down, Chris. One of the main things that you should be doing when you're working with yeah. a wire rope is what? Gloves. Using gloves. All right. Using what? The reason being is if there's any burrs in there, yeah. you don't get your hands ripped to shreds. Now, come on. So we'll stretch it out and... Uh... What other things are you looking at it when you, when you, if, if and when you do stretch it out? For free. First phrase, kinks, bend. Kinks, good, well done. Now, 
rod. In this case, we're going to use the 40 ton uh, rope. Uh, you can use whatever strop that you've got over there. You'll hook it onto that machine. And uh, what you then do is, uh, once you've got everything all set up, all right, what's the next stage you've got to go through, guys? Uh, what do you call them? Uh, you set it up. Deciding on which direction we're going to pull from. Good, which direction? Any other thing you've got to look and worry about? Safety uh, aspects of it. In, 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 a, in, a, in a sense of what? Like if people uh, in the facility are flying uh, parts coming at you. What, what would that, uh, uh, who would that affect? It'll be uh, the standard standard driver. Standard uh, people standing around in that danger area. Good. Well done. Anything else? Uh, Chris? Who else might be inside there? And you got to communicate with the, opera, uh, the two operators and the, the person who's actually uh, uh, in charge of the... Well done. Side Carry on. Okay, just have a think about it as well. Come in, uh, Chris. Now, when we want, when we pull this one out, I just want all I want is the machine started up, mach uh, the uh, machine put into neutral. I uh, just want the motor running over when you first pull. I also want you then now to start thinking about where you're going to place the dogman. How you're going to do? How you're going to control both operators? You then have got to conduct a briefing amongst yourselves who's going to go where, do what, and where the dogman's going to be and, and, and how you're going to start and stop. So you may include, have to give a quick briefing again on hand signals. Yeah. So that everybody within that team is familiar with what, whatever signal is given, they know exactly what to do. Refresh yourselves on the hand signals. All right? Position your fellow vehicle. Ready to hook up, ready to pull out, including the taking up the strain, etc. So that once you've got the strain, it's a nice steady pull out. Remember also, don't damage my fucking wagon. Otherwise, you're going to get a heavy build at the end of this course. Any questions? Let's go about think about it at this stage. Now, what I want done is, back. you're the PIC. You're the person in charge. Brief me quickly. We're going to do a straight pull. Yep. Uh, I'm going to stand in the, and I'll slide me to the to the right so I can uh, in front of James as it comes forward so I can actually see the uh, is it the, ch the chain slowly get rising. Yep. And give him commands with my fingers. Yeah. And I'll make sure uh, these nice, you know. And once we once we get uh, get the right uh, starts pulling, I'll only give him one like move movement like that. Yeah. And once we're out, that's be my next uh, thing to stop. Okay. But now, um, Gary and I are spectators. Yep. Where do you want us? What I want you fellas to do is, you can, uh, I want you fellas uh, 15 metres behind me. 15 metres behind you? Yep. Okay, any other things that we need to know about in uh, reference safety to this exercise? When can we come up and... Uh, Oh, come come forward to check. Is when I when I when I when I stop James and I walk around and, and he's uh, sort of backed out a bit to lower the to loosen the chain down a bit. Yep. Then I'll bring you first forward. Thank you. Let's get uh, get it going then.
Okay, it's not a deer. And a hook. What you will have done. The setup and everything was good. Alright? Now, because you will have not got radios, it's better. What's another way of, uh, that you can use for command and control? I.e., when that one's ready, when that one's ready. Horn. Horn? Anything else? What about lights on the vehicle? Lights. When he's ready, put the lights on. For this sort of thing, can't be seen very clearly. Aye. Use that full signal, i.e. when you're taking up the strain, you just about got it, you've got it. And then from there, you go to each one, point, whatever. All right? So make sure that your signals are clear to everybody. Most sites you don't have Better communication. I see. Okay? So those are the sort of things you should be looking at. Okay? Any questions, guys? Can you press A? Yeah. It's not as hard as you uh, envisage it to be. Okay, it's only a simple exercise, but I think you get the point across before you start doing your uh, recovery exercise. There are a number of steps that you go through. First of all, calculation of the of the casualty, your weight, restraint that's placed upon you, and obviously the machine that you're going to need to tow the bloody thing out's got to be a, capable of pulling that that weight. Yeah. Okay. A simple one, as you said, as you just set up over you, which is straight pull, which is good. However, the points that I want you to take into consideration again, remember. Command and control on the ground. The other thing is, where you were standing should have been further out this way, Aye. away, because you still were within within the safety Aye. factor from there. Where you were standing over there, if that rope would have broken there, you would have come around and taken you out. So that's that's a, that's a bad one. Point. Question, Harvey. Um, with the straight pull, um, is the operator inside this vehicle in any kind of uh, danger if that it is. happens it to is. come off and come it straight is. through the windscreen, you know? It is, it is. there is, but uh, we just use, I know, I know, we've got a well overrated bloody rope there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is our safety factor, so right. it doesn't, uh, but however, if, if with a two ton, I wouldn't even have that vehicle there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd have something else with a, with a cage in front of it, so if it did come back, be safe. Yeah. it'd still be safe. <laughs> okay? So, any quick final questions, guys? Yeah. Okay, what I want you guys to do then is pack up all the gear, make sure the gear goes back where it came from, properly, not just dump on the deck. Get everything put away, and I want you guys to come back down over here, and we'll start going on to the next exercise. Thank you. That, uh,